Hi, and welcome to the Nate Game and Other Stuff. Come on in. And welcome to the Knitting Game and Other Stuff. I'm your host, Leslie, and this is episode 102. Uh, the last time I recorded was on March 21st, and um, I'm coming to you today from my studio, my home studio. Uh, there's yarn over here, and my loom is right there. If you can see, oh, look, it comes out so pretty. My color gamp. This is my color study blanket that I'm working on. And I must apologize if I was really washed out right there. I looked like the Crypt Keeper for a second. What fun. So, um, what's been going on? We've been hiking. Uh, let's see. The week before last, I did three and a half miles. Last week, I did 7.6 miles. And this week, I did another three and a half. I also went down to Williamsburg and visited my lovely niece at the uh, University of William and Mary. And uh, she loves it down there and we like to go down and visit. So that was really nice going through historic Williamsburg. So that was a really great time. Um, let's see, work is work. Uh, we're getting ready for our anniversary cruise. So in May, uh, we're going to go to the Bahamas, just a quick little four night, uh, cruise down there. So Disney Vacation Club, yay. Um, we, oh, big news. We got our air conditioner, uh, redone, completely renew system. And if you followed me on Instagram, you saw, I posted a picture of our new thermostat, which is the size of uh, an iPad mini um, or a little seven inch type tablet. I mean, that is really how big it was. It's kind of incredible that that is up on my wall now and I can launch a uh, space lunar module vehicle um, <laughs> from my hallway. Kind of crazy. Uh, getting ready for Zombie Knit Apocalypse, thinking about that, and I will circle back around to that in a minute. Um, what else is going on? The AF3 Charity Sock Yarn Club. I sent out invoices uh, yesterday morning. I know I was supposed to do them on Saturday. We went down to Williamsburg to go for the visit for, with my niece. So by the time we got back, I was totally like dead. There was nothing was happening um, on Saturday. So, yeah, I sent them out Sunday morning. Um, I was just talking with Rachel today and we have the colorway name set. So it is very cute. I hope you guys really uh, enjoy it when you get it. I have seen the yarn, um, the test skein, and it was wonderful. Uh, spring has, I think, officially sprung here in Fredericksburg, Virginia. Um, it is warmer now, hence the thankfulness for having the air conditioning working. Um, let's see, I have sun in my face, which is probably the last time I'll see the sun for, uh, till the end of the week, because we're supposed to get rain. And the trees, the trees have started to... Uh, bud. So in about three or four weeks, I probably will not be able to see my neighbors to the back of us anymore. Not to say that that's a bad thing, you know, to not see your neighbors, but we do enjoy the fact that in the spring and summertime, um, we, we get a little privacy on the back of the house, which is nice. Um, the girls are getting big. They're, uh, really huge, uh, huge. There's medium-sized dogs. Pearl's probably about 50 pounds. Tuesday's 45. And they still act like they could fit in the palm of my hand. And they want to cuddle. And it's just sometimes pretty goofy. All right. So let's get on with it, shall we? All right. So talking about zombie knit apocalypse, uh, I have a finished object. 
I feel like I f want to finish all the things, not just cast them all on. I want to finish all the things. So um, I finished these the other day. These are my Cyborg Craft Room socks. Um, I was hoping you'd be able to see the color a little bit better. It's very, I don't know. They're, to me, they look really pink. Um, I, I, I don't know if maybe if I could take a picture, if I could get the color better, but as you can see, um, I've got the, uh, fish lips kiss heel. Uh, it's just a two by two rib on the top of the foot and around the cuff. Uh, I have to weave in the ends, but I plan, and these are not blocked, obviously. Um, but I plan on wearing them tomorrow regardless. Uh, the folks at the office have seen these being done. I will take them to uh, meetings and work on them before the meeting. Um, I, I work in a pretty conservative office, and I think uh, it would be really looked down upon if I actually knit during the meeting, even though I probably would retain more and stay awake better. Uh, I don't think that they would like it if I was actually working on a pair of socks during the meetings. So I'm going to show off. I'm going to call these my Tuesday socks because I have a meeting every Tuesday. Um, so these are my Tuesday socks out of the Cyborg Craft Room. Um, this was called uh, Rainbow Unicorn Bite. Um, and it does read a lot pinker. I don't know how to show you anymore how pink they really are. Uh, they do do this like really cool little swirly thing. I don't know if you can see that. It, it really shows up when you come back, when you pull back. You can see the, I don't know how she did that, but it's kind of like a happy accident that they, they swirl around like that. And if I put both of them together, you see that? Swirl, swirl, swirl. So that's kind of neat. So my finished objects. And these count for the Zombie Knit Apocalypse knit along because Cyborg Craft Room is a vendor at Zombie Knit Apocalypse. So I get at least one entry into the knit along. So I need to get the finished photos posted today and post them up in the group. So I gotta weave in ends, gotta weave in ends. All right, so I'm gonna put those up here. Oh, I guess I really, see, I should do that. <laughs> I have a blind down. I actually have a blind down. The sun is going to go down behind a house here in about um, probably a minute or two. And it won't be an issue. And hopefully it doesn't get too dark. All right. So let me show you this other project I have been really cranking on. This is my Andante sweater. And um, I'm making really good progress with this. Uh, like I said last time, I will finish it just in time to put it away uh, for the season. So it is, I'm knitting it out of Cascade 220 in the Blueberry Swirl colorway. And let's see, as you can see, there is the waist shaping. There's um, a bit of ribbing here where the waist shaping goes. And I've got about that much done. Um, the finished sweater with the bottom ribbing comes to about... The top of the thigh or the bottom of the gluteus maximus muscles to put it in a nice way if baby got a little bit of a back I need to knit a little bit longer so I have to get down to probably right above my hips of where my hips are and then start the ribbing for the bottom band then I got to pick up everything on the sides Pick up everything, do ribbing on the sides and up the top of the collar. There's a cast on here that I just pick up stitches, just pick up stitches, knit ribbing, ribbing, ribbing everywhere. And then I've got to do the sleeves, which I don't think the pattern calls for full length sleeves, but I think I'm going to do, I think I really am going to do maybe just slightly past the crease of the elbow. So like a half sleeve with about three inches of the ribbing, which is different than what the pattern calls for. I don't think I want um, a full arm's length of ribbing. 
But this is going on really, this is great TV knitting. When I'm watching Scandal or something and I'm watching my shows, uh, I knit on this because I don't have to think about it. It's either knit or it's a purl. One or the two, most likely. I don't think, yeah, I really don't think there's any, um, there may be some decreases on the sleeve. And that's all I have to worry about. So that is the Andante sweater. Um, let's go with this. So, if you can see, my little sheepy bag. It's my Elizabeth Quinton bag that I got at Zombie Net Apocalypse 2013. So in this, I have my year and temperature scarf. Can you see all that mess in there? I have, and I will count for you, how many different skeins of yarn balls. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I have nine balls of yarn. Granted, it's just the, the Knit Picks palette, so they're kind of on the small side. Oddly enough, that blue, that kind of icy blue, that's the color. <laughs> Let's see. But this is February. Let's see. That is not the color. That's a little greener than that. Now, I know everybody complained about how cold it was this year in February and how much snow we got, yada, yada, yada. We had a 70 degree day. At least 71 degrees because I have one day where I have this really dark, dark, like bright Kelly green. I don't. I give up. The colors are not true. Anyway, so here is my year in temperature scarf. So this is. February down here between the two this is the cream this is the break so are you looking at the front or the back you are looking at the back so let me turn it around so you can see the front all right so here's the front this is the break between January and February I've worked on six days five days one two three four five days in February up here at the top and of course, it's horribly washed out. You got the little pop of pink. I don't remember what that color is. Um, but it's going to get real cold in February. It does get cold. I'll have that one real pop of green. And then it, it, it will be cold. The only problem I have with this scarf. And I'm sure you can tell what my problem is. I have a feeling there's going to be some knots in this scarf because I don't want to have to weave in all those ends really all those ends so I think there's going to be some knots and just a little like whip tuck thing going on so I don't have to weave in all of these ends I try to carry up the floats or carry up the sides as much as possible I've got one there you can probably see see the purple right there so I have tried to carry it up the side as much as I can but as you can see it just it it doesn't stay consistent we've been up and down 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 so that is my year in temperature scarf so the last thing I have to show you is my derecho which if you guys don't know what a derecho is it is a straight line windstorm it is not a tornado tornado is cyclonic air action and a derecho is straight line and it's um, a fast moving high speed windstorm it can cause massive damage as a matter of fact this window over here uh got a top of a tree fell through the window and um, in my studio. So yeah, we've we've experienced the destructive power of a derecho personally. The designer of this pattern is the wonderful Laura Ayler. 
Um, I am a fangirl. If I ever got to meet her, she doesn't know how big of a fangirl I am. But I probably talk about her in nearly every show. Because I just love the designs so much. Uh, she also lives in Virginia. And a lot of her designs are named uh, like Litchfield. It's a town in Virginia. So um, here we go. Here is the derecho. And I'll scoot back just a little bit. Um, it's growing quite a bit. Um, as you can see, you've probably figured out you start with this one triangle. And then you flip flop back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Um, I finished, this is the sixth section with this um, cream and charcoal grayish black. And I'm working on the final section, which is over here. It is the red and black. And let's see if you can see that over here. I hope I'm not dropping any stitches. So um, once I finish this part, the red and black part, then I will move into uh, the border. And because I'm doing the large, I will be doing the border in black. Now I have extra yarn, or I will have extra yarn. I don't know how much. I'm done with the cream, and I've got, I've got to weigh it, but I've got a pretty sizable amount of cream left over. So what I was thinking about doing is another just a simple quick shawl no lace just um either a boomerang with the different colors and go from um whichever weighs the least to whichever weighs the most and just because it might actually work where it's the gray the black and then the red or just some kind of back and forth you know interchanging the three colors every two rows and carrying colors up the side or just do white, black, red, and a boomerang or a triangle. I haven't decided, but I think it's going to, the, the, I have enough. It won't be this big. It will be more like a shawlette because this one is going to grow. This one, it's very, I can already tell it's very stretchy. It's very springy. This is um, neighborhood fiber company and rustic fingering. So it's a single ply and I do believe it's a super wash. So it's going to grow very nicely and it's going to be very warm and very beautiful and very squishy. So that is the show for this week. I, I just really quick and dirty. The boys are out at practice. Um, they are doing uh, violin and banjo. No, I do violin, fiddle. They're at banjo and piano. So the boys are out, then they're going to go to the store. It's leftovers tonight for dinner. My mother-in-law hasn't come home yet, but the dogs are barking, so you can probably hear that because the back door is right at the window for the studio. Um, the girls are out playing with carrots. Josie wants to come in. But they're out there panting. I can see Tuesday. <laughs> Cutie pie. Alrighty, so... Um, I think that's all I have. So hope you enjoy episode one or two. I want to finish all the things. I think that's what I'm going to calling it. Be calling it is finishing all the things. So then I can cast on all the things because I do. There's a couple things I want to get working on. So uh, hope you all have a great week and I'll talk to you later. Bye. All right. I'm going to try to attempt to show you my weaving. Uh, just a real quick supplement. If this doesn't work, we just won't speak of it. But if it works, it'll be kind of cool to put on the show. Um, so here I've got my color study. You can see across the way here, I've got all the colors. You probably can't see the furthest, but you can see this middle where the orange is. Yeah, I think you can see this is the orange. Uh, this is the yellow orange. This is the like the ochre yellow. Um, lime yellow, Kelly green, and can you see, oh yeah, you can see over, all the way over to the royal blue. All right, so we're going to do a little weaving here. So this is a plain weave construction, so I'm stepping on, um, I have it tied up, so uh, one petal, one treadle is my first and third shaft, and um, my other treadle is the second and four. And the way I have this set up is 
when I'm on the one, I come, I throw my shuttle from the left. And then if I'm on my two or even, and I do this with all my, um, like my twills and stuff, I like one to be on the left and two and the even numbers to come in from the right. So this is my one shaft. So I'm going to try to do this. I can't do it as well going left to right. See, my shuttle only goes part way through. I'm new at this, so I don't give it a lot of oomph, and you're not supposed to do this at all. My um, weaving friends are probably very upset with me for doing that right there. So, and the way I do it is I pull a little on the end just to make sure I've got it. Um, got some here to keep my um, edges nice. I hold, I don't know if you can see that, but I hold the... Um, my weft yarn at an angle and then I just beat it so that's the one and I change and then I come over and I do the two see I do much better when I do from the right hand I am right-handed so that's good so that is my weaving and hopefully the camera is not bouncing so hard that was a little bit better so I like to get, make sure I give it a little bit of slack so I'm not tugging too much on the edges because I don't want I don't want it to come in too much. Now there'll be some take up on both sides and you just you can't really change that, but that one's better. There we go. And that is the weaving and you can see I have just a, I've got a couple rows here um, because this is this like golden ochre color uh, this purple I don't know if you can see the purple over here now you can't because that's the orange is where it stops but a complementary color like this blue it makes it easy to count so um, when the colors offset so the blue and orange I'm sure you can't see that or the red and green. Red and green is really, if you look at your color wheels, your complementary colors. So uh, purple and yellow are complementary colors. Um, orange and blue are complementary colors. And red and green are complementary colors. And the way I remember that is red and green is Christmas. Blue and orange are the Florida Gators. And I hate the Florida Gators because I'm a Florida Seminole fan. So I always know blue and orange are the gator colors. And then the only ones that you really have left are the yellow and the purple. And that's how I remember, you know, just real quick off the top of my head, which colors are complementary. Now the way this color study is going to go is that there's each color will intersect with itself and all the other colors twice. So that is my color city, and I must apologize. The girls are in the house now, so you may hear some hound dog going on in the background. But uh, there you go.